finally. Boom. We are live. <laughs> 30 oh. minutes late, but that's all right. Well, this time so, you can say the butler did it. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to blame the weather and the snow and lockdowns and COVID. Oh. So <laughs> we got uh, a couple people coming in the room, hopefully. And we have a, a special guest with us like we do most weeks. Last week we had my wife. So this week we're kind of keeping with the theme of uh, the wives. We, the, the spousal sort of thing, the mom and pop studio, let's hear what the other half has to say. So we have Paula Moon, who's married to Warren, Warren Noyce, you all know him. I think uh, you, you've taken his name, so your name is Paula Moon Noyce, right? Well, I'm actually legally Paula Noyce. It's just my Facebook. I, okay. I needed it. That answers that. So Paula, and I was talking to them earlier with Warren as well, and he says that she's a little bit nervous because she's never really done this one-on-one -on -one before. <laughs> it's new for me. Yeah, it's all new for you. So I appreciate you being here. We're going to just talk real casual about running a photography business and sort of get your thoughts on what you've been, you guys have been up to. But the first question, I'm going to throw you an easy one. Uh, I want to know a little bit about you and where you're from. So from <laughs> from your Facebook, I saw that you were from a tiny little town of Kitscotty. Did I say it yeah. right? Yes. Man, if there ever was a small town girl, <laughs> she is the one. <laughs> I don't even think they have a Wikipedia uh, entry. There. Okay, so two questions. How big is... Uh, I see, I forgot the oh, name. Oh, you're going to ask me a tough question about population? I have no uh, idea. Well, do they have a Tim, do they have a Tim Hortons? Absolutely not. All right. That's oh. small. Hotel, pub, post office, <laughs> couple restaurants, you know. So I yeah. went I, I went on Google Maps and then I went to Street View and the first thing I saw were these humongous grain silos. So I'm figuring it's sort of a, <laughs> still in the prairies and there's yes. a lot of farming that goes on near there. Paula, tell us a little bit about where you're from. Sort of give us a quick synopsis, uh, your background, and lead us up to the future. Like you know, <laughs> we'll make it, we'll make it short and sweet. Okay. Well, I was um, born in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, lived Red Deer area until I was about 13, and then we moved to Kitscotty, where Kitscotty. Uh, my father and mother were um, raised. My grandparents, great grandparents. There's many generations of moons. So nice. that's where I went to high school, graduated there, and then moved off to the big city, of course. What else are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And then promptly moved back when it was time to have children. So so that area is where I mostly spent my time up until about 20 years ago where I moved to North Battleford. Cool. So. Lots of history, lots of family. And right. um, uh, I, I believe you and went downhill from there. <laughs> You you met Lauren, Lauren in uh, North Battleford. I, I if, am I correct in that one or no? Um, more in Lloyd Minster. Okay. Uh, I knew him then. We were always friends. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until well about eleven years ago that yeah. we started dating, and it just went from there. Settled into Lloyd Minster. So, uh, which is brings us up to the current present say the last 10 years where you guys have been running your own photography business mm -hmm. in Lloyd Minster. Now, uh, it's interesting that you're here because I want to hear your take on it. I've interviewed Warren and I've chatted with him and I've he's spoken at many infernos. So I kind of know the guy pretty good. Mm -hmm. I've always admired his story um, of him, him and his wife divorced and he had to give up his studio name and he moved to the nearest town of North Battleford. I believe that that's sort of the uh, background yeah. story, correct? Yeah. He moved because I was here. So, Oh, he came to me. there's there. That, that even makes it better. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, and that makes perfect sense, but he's close enough to uh, where his children were, I believe. And uh, your children are also in Lloyd Minster. Yes. Um, some of them. Okay. My oldest daughter is in Kamloops. She's a physician there. Oh, nice. But the rest of my grandkids are in Lloydminster, so I okay. spend a lot of time there. We lost uh, John, but that's all, all oh, the better. Coming back. I'm still here, don't worry. <laughs> I, I was getting tired of looking at him anyways. I'd much look, rather look at Paula's pretty face. Okay, so no, anyways, Warren's story, I mean, he literally moved to this town with you, and you guys started a photography business knowing mm -hmm. nobody, having virtually zero uh, branding, zero presence, nobody knew who you were. And I know a few photographers in that area from mm -hmm. decades ago. And uh, he told me that 
one of them told him that there was no way it was going to fly, that he wasn't going to be able to do high school seniors. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, whenever I tell this story to anybody or anybody who says, yeah, high school seniors don't work in Canada, I'm like, well, you got to listen to Warren's story. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's a guy who went in and started a studio with you and you guys just sort of made it happen. So um, what was that like in the early days? Like as far as how, how are we going to get this going? I mean, we're really new <laughs> to this town and we want to start a photography business. There's a lot of competition or am I wrong on that one? Um, no, not wrong at all. There's lots of competition here. And I think it was Warren's personality. Um, anywhere he went, he would hand out a business card. And we also, um, I had teenage daughters, so mm -hmm. we used them. We put them in the living room, took pictures of them, and then had them hand out flyers at their high school. And right. it wasn't long before we started getting busy with high school seniors. And that's kind of what he's known for now. Oh, really? That's the number one thing? This area. I think so, yeah. Like he, that's, he really loves it. He loves the energy mm -hmm. of, of the seniors. And um, so that's kind of his forte among yeah. many other things, but that's what he enjoys probably the most. Oh, yeah. Um, you guys also do dance schools and you're also a newborn photographer. And I want to get to those in a second, but I want to just mm -hmm. kind of sit on the high school seniors in northern Saskatchewan in Canada sort of idea where others and many have said it's impossible. You guys proved them wrong. And to this day, you're still doing them, right? Right. Even, yeah. well, exactly. How's that working out? And how's it working out with COVID and all lockdowns? Um, our numbers are down from what we normally are at for, for grads, but still very strong. Mm -hmm. um, I think that has a lot to do with the type of sessions we're shooting. It's not just cap and gown. It's not just formals. Um, we want it to be about who they are at that stage of in their life. It's gotta be about what their hobbies are. Who are they? You should be able to look at their pictures and, and understand what they're all about at that stage in their life. And so that session is very much like that. Mm -hmm. um, we want it to be fun, exciting for them. Um, mm -hmm. it's about the experience. It's not just the pictures. So that's what we strive to do with yeah. that session. So you've really, you guys have really created that as part of the entire driving force behind these sessions, right. obviously, and, and, and sort of caught on. I would imagine that's the way it's been for many, many years now. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, every year, the, the sense I get, correct me if I'm wrong, the sense I get that every season, every year it comes along. I'm sure you get a new crop of high school seniors mm -hmm. and they, they pretty much automatically come to you. Do you have to do a lot of marketing to go out and get them or is it, is it kind of like, is there momentum there? Don't have to do a lot of advertising. Quite often what we will do before grad season is do a slideshow from past years mm -hmm. of our graduates and that gets the excitement going. Um, usually have no problem booking them. And that has a lot to do with albums as well, because people come to us because they want that album with pictures. They don't want just digital. They want yeah. something tangible that they can have in their hands to keep forever. And that's what we're known for doing where a really, lot of yeah. the other photographers are not. So. so what do you say when somebody says to you, well, why can't I just get the digital files? Um, the importance of having pictures in print we yeah. preach it every day. We Enjoy. also will give um, a low res digital on an okay. app. So they have them for social media because that's mostly what they want digital for. Mm -hmm. It's not to print great big canvases and things. It's because no. they want to share them. They're excited about it. So we give them the app with every image that they purchase in printed form, whether that be in an album or wall art, um, we give them the digital for social media so and they like that keep everybody happy yeah so it's amazing that you maintain that value of an actual tangible printed album which i 100 mm -hmm. agree with and that's what we push to for all our sessions and uh but we get you know more yeah, resistance occasionally mm -hmm. 
drives my wife crazy. It just drives her crazy because she takes all the phone calls. Right. And uh, so we always got to address that on an ongoing basis. So I'm, I'm assuming pretty safe to say that you guys have created such a strong brand in that specific niche that every year it's much, much easier to sort of say, you know, hey, this is what we do. And everybody kind of already knows that to a degree. Right. You know, you go see Warren and Paula, you get this amazing session. We're going to do some stunning photos and we're going to get an album or mm -hmm. prints. Right. That's amazing. So, um, yeah, it flies in the face of convention in many, many ways. And also in the idea, it sort of defeats that whole idea that uh, in Canada, seniors, high school seniors won't sell. So, uh, John, do you have a question on that topic for Paula? No, like continue? I know myself, I started doing seniors a while ago back, like I would say years ago, five, six years ago, and I stopped for a while because this area just wasn't taking it. So, um, I've even told Warren a couple times, Paul and Warren, I'm going to call them and get some advice from them because that's one thing I do want to get better at. Yeah. So, what advice would you give someone like John? So, somebody who's an established photographer, what advice would you give somebody like John, Paula? Um, what we've done in the past, even, is um, we'll bring, like, select, say, three or four grads mm -hmm. and then we will do a shoot with them, like with casuals and um, whatever. And then we bring them in and we have makeup artists and hairstylists and we make it kind of a fun photo shoot for them. And it's not their senior pictures. It's just a, you know, a bonus kind of thing that we've done. And that went over really well too, because they oh. get to be model for a day and they really enjoy that. And, you know, it seemed to work well. Um, we haven't done anything like that recently because we're, we're busy and yeah. I wish we could do more of that. And maybe we might have to revisit that in the future too. doing, and that would probably be a good thing for John to try too. That's so. sort of like something that would kickstart it for you and, right. or would possibly fire up, uh, sort of give a turbo boost to mm -hmm. John's marketing. Yeah, I've just, done samples of some people here, like my daughter and some other high schools from last year. I just have to actually put something together and put a packaging of like pricing together and stuff. Right. So um, I'm not 100% sure I totally understand what you're talking about, though, when you just described what you described, Apollo, the, uh, the event. So it's like an event with makeup and... Yeah, well, what we've had is um, we put it out there for graduates that we'd be booking for that year. Right. That we would like to you know, have a day where they come in and they bring some different clothing articles. Um, we have makeup artists, hairstylists there to do them up so they can kind of have a little sample of what they're going to experience their day of graduation. So, what, cool. you know, for their photos, for their session. So they get to be model for the day. We have their favorite music mm -hmm. going. They get to, you know, mingle with some of the other graduates and, um, it went really well. And then they got to see how we work and the studio and they know what they can expect a little bit more. And it just gets that excitement going. Yeah. Cool. How important is the hair and makeup experience? I guess it's right up there. Right? Well, and it's something that we really strongly encourage when people do book sessions with us yeah. for graduation and boudoir and everything like that. Yeah. Is you've spent all this money on your dress. Mm -hmm. Spend the extra money and get your makeup and hair done professionally. It, it yeah. makes the experience so much better for everybody. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what we encourage. And yeah. quite often they will, because they do their, their hair trials that day yeah. and makeup trials, and then they come for pictures. You call it hair and makeup trials. Yes, they go and have that done ahead of time before graduation. So nice. They might nice. as well get some pictures out of it. So you're, you're tying it into the whole experience of graduating and uh, obviously got to look good. That's uh, the hair and makeup is like the uh, the sprinkles on top of the donut. The, uh... It is. <laughs> and for the guys, we encourage them to bring whatever is special to them, whether it is their vehicle or um, sports related items. We want to tell their story of who they are. So Or their tractors. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, <laughs> I I I uh, 
Oh, I didn't. Okay, I just got to poke fun at your hometown. I went to the uh, <laughs> Kit Scotty webpage, and there's a frequently asked question. The first question is, can I drive my sled or quad through the village? <laughs> you know, you know you're know, you in a no Tim Horton small town in <laughs> Alberta when that's the number one concern. So. It is. Uh, it's pretty quiet. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just poking fun. So. Um, <laughs> John, chime in if you have any questions. I got a slew of questions, so I want to talk yeah, about. I want to talk about um, uh, management. So, um, <laughs> you guys work as a couple, mom and pop studio. I've always said this. I've maintained this from the start, and I've personally experienced my most success once I got married and started working with my wife as a team. And I always thought, you know, a mom and pop small business. I've always liked that idea. And in particular, I've loved that idea. And I think it's really, really well suited for a portrait studio, whatever mm -hmm. kind of portraits one may be doing, whether it's weddings, families, fairies, seniors, uh, business, yada, yada, yada. There's just this energy that works. And there seems to be always a division of work between the couple. Uh, like my wife does 100% sales, 100% booking and management. I do all the shooting and all the Photoshop. John and his wife, he does all the shooting, but she does all the Photoshop, how, so et cetera. So it's different for every couple. So how is it between you and Warren? How have you over the years decided who does what and what, who's good at what? And <laughs> sort of give us a little bit of background in that if you can. Well, in the beginning, I just did whatever he told me. <laughs> right. You're such a good wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now I'm not so great. Um, a lot of the office stuff, he gave me, which was really interesting because I spent 20 some years in pharmacy at that point. So I okay. knew the workflow of the pharmacy and that's what I knew, that computer program. So the whole thing of Photoshop and running a studio, it mm -hmm. was a huge learning curve for me. And it still is. There's still things that okay. I struggle mm -hmm. with. But it's become more, um, in the beginning I was assisting um, I did take photos before I met Warren, but not on a professional level. And I cringe looking back at all of those sort of photos that I thought were so beautiful at the time, but I knew <laughs> nothing about studio lighting. So he taught me very quickly about that. And mostly that was setting things up, you know, what's a high key setup? Mm -hmm. Go put it up, you know, just, um, and the organization of the studio, because Anybody that knows Warren knows that he isn't the most organized man in the world. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> so that's been, it's interesting. And now I've kind of taken over my end of things and have less time for his, which is a struggle. Um, I do my own shooting, editing. I deal with my clients on my own. Mm-hmm. But yet I still do a lot of the album design and um, things with his clients. So you, you say his clients, your clients. I'm curious about that. Well, uh, he's just, taking the photos. So yeah. I still consider them to be more his clients because he's going to be, you know, dealing with the final product. He's mm -hmm. going to be doing the editing and I do the clerical kind of work on it. But mm. Okay. He's on his own with that. Interesting. Interesting. So you're, you obviously have had a passion for shooting to some degree mm -hmm. and you're obviously shooting now so you've got your clients so mm -hmm. uh warren's got his and i see the way that's sort of divided up it kind of <laughs> the way you're just sort of like putting that tag on it that identification so mm -hmm. your clients his clients and you do your workflow on your stuff and he does his workflow on his right so you're pretty adept with photoshop or lightroom yeah um he's taught me um, I'm still not where I really want to be as far as my editing process. It's uh -huh. a learning curve. So, but I remember when he first sat me down and he said, well, here's Photoshop. Just play with it. Yeah. Like, oh my God. I don't even have to turn it on. Let's start with that. Yeah. Just play with it. Cause I'm not really great with technology. He'll tell lots of people about that. So it's been a struggle. I think I started more with dance photos. That's where I really learned Photoshop uh -huh. and 
you know, they're pretty basic edits. Yeah, yeah. But you learn to, you know, stretch your backgrounds, build backgrounds. And sometimes with those dance sets, it's not exactly easy. So it was it was really good for me to learn that. Yeah. There's Warren's comment right there. I do all the cleaning of the house. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Okay. Is he lying? <laughs> I think he's lying. Yeah. I think he's BSing us. <laughs> yeah, but he's taught me everything, and it's yeah. I do a lot of second guessing. So uh -huh. to have that extra set of eyes to look things over and say, "Yeah, that's good. You're you've got it where you need it to be," or he'll tell me you need to brighten it up or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that helps a lot in the whole mm -hmm. teamwork of it. Well, you seem to know what you're doing, and. Um, when it comes to learning Photoshop, I know of no better way than to be doing something like a factory type lineup where it's the same mm -hmm. thing, which dance schools incorporates. Right. So you're really going to instill that knowledge. Uh, for me, it was years and years and years of working in the dark room. And once I got into uh, Photoshop, it was an easy transfer over. So mm -hmm. I got on pretty quick. For John, well, you know, John's just not that bright. So he has his wife do everything. <laughs> I taught her everything she knows. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm joking. So, but um, um, but you shoot. I, we see your work. You do amazing newborn photography, and obviously, as you just described, you're doing all the Photoshop and or I mean, do you do do Lightroom at all, or is it just Photoshop? I do. I bring all the photos into Lightroom and do all my conversions and everything from right. there, and then I bring it into Photoshop. I still edit in Photoshop, not Lightroom. Okay. Yeah. So you're going from raw files in the Lightroom, Lightroom. You do the basics right. and and then the finals. I gotta I gotta ask you a weird question. Do you use a mouse? Yes. Because I know oh, Juan I doesn't. I have a Wacom tablet, and it's still sitting there. It has a layer okay. of dust on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've never because used because I need to spend the time to figure it all out. Whenever I've tried to work with it, I get yeah. frustrated. So yeah, I know too. I would really like to have it for doing composites yeah. because I do a lot of um, digital backgrounds. Like with every session, I try to include a digital backdrop really? image because the parents love it. Really? They yeah. love it. And it's a lot harder to do with a mouse in just okay. extracting. And so, so you, you drop in a whole new backdrop, like, yeah. Most, mostly yeah. with the seniors? No, I just do it with newborns. Okay. Just newborns. And they like that. They love it. And that's usually where you'll get your sales for wall art. Like okay. big metal prints. And so that. John, and I John. wanted to do something different than the local photographers. So I wanted to mm -hmm. include something and be known for those type of photos too. John, can you go to her website? Can we find well, some of those images? Shots that she, yeah, she gave me some stuff here. Let me go find them here. There might be a That's couple a of digital background. Ones. I'd like to yeah. see an example of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you well, learn lighting too. What's that? You learn lighting under yeah. Warren. Yeah. Man, I could never get my wife to do Photoshop and or lighting. I mean, she would just... Is this a backdrop? No, that's a cake smash. Um, <laughs> that little guy, that's... Uh, I always do a bath after the cake smash. So oh. this little guy it was funny because it says "Happy Camper" in behind him, and he was yeah. and he was over it by then. Yeah, <laughs> that's grumpy. Yeah. Yeah, it's too cute, though. I mean, uh, so you—that's a really good idea. Do a bath after a cake smash. I never yeah. thought of that. Yeah, I don't want to send him home sticky. It's a half-hour drive <laughs> back. <to> the... <laughs> um, yeah, that's not a digital either. That's just—that's my grandson. That picture. Nice. Yeah. I'm trying nope. to figure out if you sent me any ones with digitals. I don't think you yeah, did. Yeah, there's one more. Oh, um, I think I see one. Yeah, there's two there. I don't know if they are. He's on a see. train. Yeah, that's a digital backdrop. Nice. So that train, was he was not shot that way. No. Um, he was shot, I believe, on a bed or a little posing pillow that Cute. I have. Okay. Cute. And then extracted and put on there. So, so you, you do all your own extractions? Yes. And I... Quite often, we'll have to get a little help from Warren with the uh -huh. shadowing to make it look realistic. I'm not yeah. going to lie. It's, tif it's difficult. Composites yeah. are tricky to you get don't them want, to look. You don't right. want them to look fake. Dan, Dan Marinci made a comment. He said was he was given the advice when, when you get a tablet, don't start using it with Photoshop 
Just use it when you use Facebook, read newspapers. I don't know oh. what he's saying. Put your mouse away for a couple days. Yeah, and just force yourself to use it. I know. I need to do that. It's just been kind of a whirlwind around here for the last three months. So <laughs> I'm doing it as fast as I can, and that's with the mouse. <laughs> I have. Uh, I think I have three Wacom tablets. Well, I got one that's not Wacom, but um, they're collecting dust. I've tried, and I gave up because it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I like a mouse, but I noticed Warren years ago, he was using his fingers on the pressure tablet on his laptop, mm -hmm. and I yeah. was amazed. And uh, my daughter, who's graduated from uh, graphic design, she, because of sheer laziness, started using on her Mac laptop her fingers. And I'm like, that's exactly the way Warren does his photo. Mm -hmm. And she 100% never uses a mouse or a Wacom. She just uses the pressure. I find that so bizarre, but mm -hmm. whatever works. I've never, I've never even held one in my hand. I've never had a Wacom. I've always used a mouse. Well, I got a couple for sale. <laughs> it might be another one here if I can't figure it out, make it work. But you know, whatever works <laughs> works, right? Whatever yeah. gets you there. I mean, really. And uh, it's amazing and awesome to have Warren there to help you out when you're stuck. And uh, yeah. this is interesting. So, so you do for all your newborn sessions you drop in some of those backdrops for every session? I try to include one with every session, yes. Just do they, one. Do they see it before they see the images? Do they see no. or do you suggest um, it during the sales session? I pick it. Um, a lot of times I'll get a little bit of direction from them. Like mm -hmm. with that particular little guy, his dad was an engineer. Well, and perfect. they wanted a train image. So okay. I thought, oh, that's a, a lot easier way than buying, trying to find a prop. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot safer in some cases as well. Yeah. You don't want to, you would, a lot of those things you would want to composite it anyway. So to mm -hmm. do it safely with a newborn. So that's one that I chose based on father's occupation. But I will pick them usually myself based on what poses I've got that are usable for a digital image. A lot of times I will shoot specifically for a certain digital image, but sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes baby isn't having it. And so you have to do something different. Yeah, the flamingo one is a digital backdrop too. Yeah, I figured. It's yeah. beautiful. Uh -huh. So did you, um, like, where do you get these images from? Like, including the train one, did you, um, did you? Etsy, usually. Or there's a lot of different uh, photographers that are selling them. Right. Mm -hmm. I stock yeah. photos a good one too because I do the yeah. same thing with my pinups too. Yeah. So you'll you'll be talking to a client and knowing in advance what dad or mom does, you might have this mm -hmm. idea for a theme, and in advance it'll be something you've discussed with them, possibly. Yeah. Sometimes it's a surprise <laughs> when I. Um, okay. When I do up their images and have them ready for them to view. And then yeah. the, when they come back, usually about a week or so after the, the session, mm -hmm. we meet with them when they come to our studio. Mm -hmm. And I try to have music behind the slideshow. Yeah. It's emotion. You want to have that emotion attached to those photos. And then one of those digital images will be in there as well, usually at the end. Okay. So most people really like them. I have had times where they don't purchase it, though. So it doesn't work for them sometimes, or, you know, they just, I don't know. It's not, not their thing, but most, most, most times you will sell a piece yeah. of wall art with that image Yeah. or an album with it being the cover or something. Yeah. They're usually worth it to do. Do you do all the selling or, or do you split it up with Warren? Um, we do it together. Oh, really? So we are both there for every sales session. Wow. We, we do them. So he's better with the whole sales thing than I am. Why is that? I have a really hard time selling. And I think hmm. it's like a, maybe even a confidence thing at this point, because mm -hmm. I don't feel that my work is good enough, um, you know, that for, to charge what we charge. It's because yeah. I, I have to very much keep the pricing that we have at Warren Photography. I can't have separate pricing for myself than from him. 
Mm-hmm. So quite often it's like a confidence thing. I'm like, yeah. oh, we're never going to want to spend that much money on my work. And, you know, it's. We all start that way. Yeah. And he's way better at the sales thing. Yeah. But you'll if do I it if you have way, to. I just give it away to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I know. I know. I know exactly what you're talking about. And a lot of artists struggle with that. Uh, and uh, obviously you've got that too. And, and, and But I consider Warren to be uh, a pretty strong artist as well, but he's obviously built up his uh, sales muscle and confidence. Mm -hmm. And I believe largely it's a skill set that one can build up and get stronger at. And uh, do you, do you uh, like, so all the sessions that you guys do, whether it's your set clients or his clients, you're working as the, at the sales proofing session, the, when you do the actual Mm -hmm. order, you're always there together. Yes, most times. No, there does might he... be the odd session that um, I have to be at work. Right. Uh, but it wouldn't be the baby clients. It would be his grads or you know right. a family session or something. And in that case, there would be an assistant, like one of our employees would help. Um, mm-hmm. We've tried to even train some girls to do the sessions, but we still feel that no one's going to sell or work better than us. The ones True. Um, and yeah, and I think our clients want us to be there and no be part of the process. So that relationship's important, isn't it? Right. Um, so when you guys are there, for the most part, is he taking the lead 90, 95 percent of the time or do you guys share it or? Um, <laughs> yeah, I would say that in most times it's him. Yeah, I'm there writing everything down because no one can read his writing okay. <laughs> including himself <laughs> so i'm the one that you know right takes all the notes uh-huh. um, i'm the one that enters it into quickbooks and invoices the client at that right. time um sometimes i'll go through the photos with them but when it comes time to them all be narrowed down we use um oh my goodness why can i think of the name of the program Warren, help me out. Anyway, we it's the use main that one, program, right? <laughs> and he narrows them down with that. Yeah, I have a hard time with the laptop and being able to see. I've got old lady eyes, so <laughs> all these tiny things. So I'd rather he do that part of it, honestly. What's it called? That program? It's the main one. It's a um, proofing program. It's from Australia. John, what is it? I've got oh. shoe proof in my head, but it's not shoe no. proof. Yeah, I know the one you're talking about. It's the one that James used to use too. Um, we used it. Come to me. It'll we used it up till a couple of years ago. Right. Yeah, I have never we, used um, it. We didn't use it for about a year at one point, maybe not even that long. And our sales actually dropped. Mm. So we went back to it. Right. And it, it works so well because you can actually have the client take a picture of their own living room wall and bring it into the system and then try different images so they have an idea of what it looks like on their living room walls so do you get everybody to do that uh most everybody sometimes we have clients that live a great distance away Mm -hmm. and we will do um we'll use shoot proof for them and maybe have a discussion at the end of the session before they leave showing them different products so they know what they can expect what we sell so that's not such a confusing thing when it comes time but sometimes people travel three and four hours so to get them to come back a week later for a sales session isn't always thanks dan pro select pro select that's what it is (laughs) (laughs) so uh you use shoot proof so for those who are not familiar with shoot proof we use it too by the way i have Years ago, when I went to Shootproof, I did a lot of research and I determined finally Shootproof was the best online gallery software out there. And I believe I'm correct on that one. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you use it. Now, I don't like using it when if I don't have to. We just do it for commercial shots, We for families and everything else. We want to be in person. But you said something, mm-hmm. Paula, a minute ago. Sometimes they're three or four hours away and you will use shoot proof under those circumstances and you'll have a discussion with them Uh, that's to me walking on thin ice that's walking a fine line between having shoot proof 
I've always said it was a deal killer. It's going to just kill the session sales and uh, it's mm -hmm. nothing, nowhere near the same potency and or power that you'll have when you're one on one yeah, in, a, in a nice area. So how do you address that? And, and have you noticed that to be an issue when you're when you're going the route of uh, using shoot proof for online I think gallery? People become overwhelmed because they don't know what to do with those images. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why this sales session in person yeah. is something that's so important. But if you can at least have that conversation with them after the session to show them different options and put that in their head so they know right. what they could do with those images, yeah. then it makes it a lot easier. Sometimes we have to take pictures of certain things <coughs> yep. um, and show them and send it to them that way so they can be reminded of what it's going to look like. The now, final have you product. ever thought of doing it through Zoom or something? Because I know that's what I've done. Like I, Right now, I've been using Lightroom just to do <coughs> proofing sessions with my clients. And uh, I actually use Studio Cloud, my, my actual accounting software in the past too, where I can actually, it's, it's almost like ProSelect basically. You do yeah. it the same way. And then when you pick what they want, your whole gallery thing there's of all your items you can actually have it make an invoice for them right there on the spot but once you are i have ones that are in barry which are about uh five hours away from here that we did their family pictures and we just mm -hmm. went on zoom and did a whole zoom through lightroom and that with them and that's something that we should look at doing too because we do have some clients that live a distance um yeah. what i've been using shoot proof for lately too is i've been doing school photos Mm -hmm. We had a huge demand for school photos. Everybody was messaging me because a lot of the schools around here, they because of the pandemic, they didn't even have school pictures this year. Yeah. yeah. And it was really important to the parents. So I booked everybody in just like 15 minute sessions. Right. Um, our mall has allowed us to come in. Mm -hmm. um, they actually want us there for an event every month because they really? feel that brings people to the mall. So when I did the school photos, um, I just set up three different backdrops and then had everybody go through. Um, and then those images I put on shoot proof for the parents to pick. Right. The that right. They want. That's that kind of different though. That's different. Yeah, than the, it is. It's a different kind of session. It's a high volume -y thing, right? Right. So, but, but do you still successful. have problems? Do you, do you still have problems with people not ordering in or? No, not usually. People are really good. Um, I might have to send a couple of reminders out to some. Like there's right. usually maybe one or two stragglers and I'm like, you know, just letting you know that we need to get these when, when so I can get them to the lab. When you do the school pictures and you put on shoot proof, do they know in advance there's a strict sort of like deadline they got to, so that's sort of planted in their heads. Is that something you tell them or managing their no. expectations? No, eh? No, I... I find most people are pretty excited to see them. Okay. And to order them once they've they've seen them. I don't usually have too many problems with it. Like I said, there's usually maybe one or yeah. two people that yeah. are busy and get around to it later. But yeah. Cool. Um, but then again, it's a lower priced option, isn't it? School pictures right. are not priced like your regular premium stuff. No. Unfortunately, I was and I didn't know how it would go because this is the first year we've offered that. Mm -hmm. And I tried to keep the price very close to what they would have for packages in school. Nice. And um, we don't have to spend a lot of time. It's still yeah. quite quick, but we give them so many more options for mm -hmm. posing. And like we do a full length and we do, right. you know, so um, they went over really well. And we had people cool. say, well, we're not even going to take our kids for the school pictures next year when they're available in the school, we'll just bring them to you. So that's <laughs> awesome. Good news for me. So yeah, yeah, you guys are starting to trend. It's amazing that you've got this situation, this deal going with the mall. Can you tell right. us a little bit about that? Well, it started with Santa photos at the mall. Um, right. When Warren first moved to North Battleford, we approached um, the mall administration about the, you know, possibility of going in and doing the photos. Mm -hmm. um, before that, there was a photographer that only did it one day. Um, mm -hmm. And we were offering a full month. So the deal was they provided the Santa and the set. And we come in and take the photos. Now that changed quite a bit over the years because the set we always struggled with because it was really old. 
it right, wasn't right. I know the feeling. It wasn't beautiful to photograph. It was awful. So we started doing our own backgrounds and our own sets, but they would still pay for the Santa. So that started with that. And then we started offering Halloween. Um, Easter is huge for us. We really people lined up down the mall for Easter. Really? Um, and then Valentine's Day, we started a couple of years ago as well. In the mall. So the right. mall says you guys can come in for free. Yeah, we want, they give we us want an you here. Store and they don't well, charge us anything. What a great relationship, win win situation you got going on there. Mm hmm. Do we have any samples on your website of your Santa pictures so we could see? Maybe John can show it. Uh, that's website open. I'm looking. I don't see any on there. There should be Easter. Like if you scroll, um, that's fairly recent. You'd see the Easter photos. And we bring in live bunnies. People have different opinions about that. But none of our bun bunnies have been harmed in any way. Yeah. We usually have about three or four. And they sit up on the crates nice. And if they start getting a little antsy, then we just put them back in the crate and bring out a new one so they don't get tired. Yeah. And the kids love it. So We have a local photographer who did bunnies. He had a lot of controversy because some people got up in arms about abusing abusing the animals. They made up a bunch of lies about him, and he had a real hard time with that. I, I've noticed that, especially in the States, people have a huge problem with that. Uh, most of our people around here are farm people and their kids are used to little animals like that. And I've never had, they yeah. usually don't handle them a great deal anyway. No way. They sit, they're decoration for the most part. And they're well looked after during the day. You know, we don't have long, yeah. long days there. So. And the people in your area are not in the cancel culture. It's all about that. Right. Yeah, they're farm people, and they want their kids to have that experience, and I think that's that draws yeah. them to it. Um, the Easter photos are probably more on the Facebook group page. That's where I'm going right now. I'm going to the okay. Facebook yeah. right now to take a look. And this cool. year it was interesting with uh, Christmas because being with COVID restrictions, it was really difficult because obviously you can't have children sitting on Santa's lap. Mm -hmm. So what we did is an, more of an outdoor kind of set outdoor looking set oh, I think and we the brought the light blue and pink those are the easter photos yeah okay but the christmas ones what we did is we brought in a park bench and we had tin cup telephones so we would do a couple poses of just the children reading the night before christmas or something on the park bench mm -hmm. and then we would bring in Santa and he would tuck in over by a lamppost six feet away from the children. Right. And then we'd give them each a tin cup telephone and they would interact with one another that way. And nice. it went over really well. Nice. That's the Easter scene. Those we are have Easter ones. Yeah. So the, the bunnies just mostly sit on those boxes. Yeah. So they get to pet them if they're not afraid of them. And right. The bunnies don't jump away. Well, you know, once they get, most of the time they just sit there. This year we had very active little bunnies. <laughs> yeah. So tape works them great for that. <laughs> oh, they were, they were yeah, trying duct to tape would away. work really good for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. That'll get you in trouble. <laughs> we're looking for some, some uh, Christmas. Oh, there's, oh, there's Halloween. Halloween. Halloween, yeah. So we try to change the backdrops like every couple of years. Yeah. We switch out the backdrops so they have something new and exciting. Your Halloween, Easter, school photos, I'm assuming uh, sports, which you do as well, are they all roughly priced roughly the same-ish? Um, yes, our event photography, like all our holidays, everything that we do in the mall, with the exception of the school photos, we print on site. Mm -hmm. So we, I believe it's $20 a sheet of fo photos. Okay. And we offer... An eight by ten, two five by sevens, okay. or four four by fives, and they're printed on site. So if they get four four by fives or two five sevens, it's the same pose on one right. sheet of eight by ten. And what we did this year, because of the COVID restrictions, it was by appointment only. Okay. So we wanted some commitment from people. Those are yeah. the old Santa photos. Yeah. Do you guys trim on the spot too? And are you using a uh, dye sublimation printer or? 
It's that DS-180, whatever. Oh, the, yeah, I have the DNP 820. Yes, right. I have, I have the 620. Which is, is that a dice the sub then? Yes. Okay, cool. So they're fast, right, John? Yes. Yeah, they are fast. My 4x6 one can do a 4x6 in 10 seconds. Nice. Boom. So your 8x10 one could probably do them like in 20 seconds, like an 8x10 or something. Yeah. So, so it's like... Sorry. I um, We did it by appointment, and then we had them pay for two sheets of photos ahead of time. Mm -hmm. We wanted okay. to commit, we want okay. to make sure that they're there. So yeah. we had every 10 minutes, we have another family come in and we had to have someone there to sanitize after each client has left, right? That's it was smart. Really important. And it's not like they're gonna give you a hard time because they know you guys, they respect right. your work and they know what to expect. So you're, you're getting the commitment of 20 bucks? 40. 40 bucks? They would, they would yeah, purchase two sheets. two sheets. Right, okay. But then we would always shoot at least three poses. And so, quite often they would buy the extra sheet mm -hmm. and we would say $10 for an extra sheet. And digital, we sold for $10. So wow. quite often people would buy more yeah. and it worked out well. In fact, we will probably continue doing by appointment from now on, even mm -hmm. after this pandemic is over. Yeah, because Might we do the well. Santa pictures Love here it. and we do the by appointment this year and it, it was a lot better because you kind of yeah. knew people were coming, but we didn't do the pre paying up front type of thing. Yeah, we did. Um, and we and had to have a plexiglass in front of Santa too. So the kids couldn't mm -hmm. even talk, uh, sit on them. They actually could talk to him through the glass. Yeah. We kept him off to the side after their photo was taken. Mm -hmm. He would sit down in the chair and then we had a barrier. So they had to be six feet from him. But then yep. they still had the opportunity to talk to him yep. and give them their list yep. um, and have that Santa experience. That's awesome. So it worked well. But I really like the appointments because we don't have people in long lineups. By the time yeah. you get the child in there for the photo, they were yeah. unraveling because they'd been in the lineup for however long. So yeah. it's just better experience for everybody. Yeah. Did you find you still had some walk-ins come in and still want, because that was our problem. We were told by our health unit we couldn't have walk-ins, but mm -hmm. if they showed up with their kids, we weren't going to turn them away. We would just say, you know what, we've got these appointments, but we'll squeeze you in somehow. Yeah, we didn't for Christmas, um, but for Easter, we did have a few walk-ins mm -hmm. and we had allowed enough time that we were able to squeeze some yeah. people in. And I here, I don't think it mattered much as long as you were doing all the sanitizing and we only had one family in the store at a time. So they would come in, they had to use the sanitizer, masks would come on until, you know, when the children were on the set, they could take the masks off. Mm -hmm. um, and then after they were done, we would sanitize. Yeah. It worked well. And what did you use for booking your appointments? Did you use, like I used a thing called Calendly online. Was, I found it just out of the blue somehow. I'm going to have to talk to you about that because <laughs> I need to get it all on uh, our Facebook event page. Yeah, okay. And it, it's a huge undertaking. Calendly was great because I was able to do it where for free you can do the one event at a time and you were able to schedule the dates you wanted and the times and what yeah. the actual like 10 minute schedules were. And people would just go to that link find a time that worked for them they'd write their name their email and a phone number they would get an email i would get an email saying this appointment's booked at this time and it would also add it to my google calendar so we had them all on the google calendar cool and i didn't have to do anything it just took care of it all for me yeah see that's awesome i didn't do it that way yeah. <laughs> i was accepting e-transfers from every single person that booked mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i have my little book that i would write everything all the appointments in and then check off that they paid and yeah, uh, very time consuming, but yeah. it we'll got talk. the job done. <laughs> I got to do things the hard way, you know. Very organized. <laughs> I mean, you put the work in for the benefit down the road, right? Right. And uh, I, yeah, there's, there's something to be said about having uh, everything prepaid and yeah. organized. And it sounds to me like what you said, you're going to, that's going to be the way it is. That's just mm -hmm. the way it is from now on. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, then they've already spent that $40, right? Yeah. So when they come that day, they're more apt to spend more money that day yeah. because the $40 is already gone. And Have you noticed a bump in sales because of that? Very much so. Okay. Yeah. We, we all approve of, of extra sales. 
I got yeah. bump of sales when I started offering debit and credit on site too. Yeah, we do we that have, too. We don't have Square, but we have the other one called Paid Pro. Mm -hmm. And people don't, oh, I don't have, I only have 10 bucks on me. Okay, I'll just take the one print or something for $8 mm -hmm. or whatever. But then if you say, well, we take debit. Oh, okay. Well, I'll take Boom. four of this and I'll take the digital file. And, and yeah, your it sales does help a out. lot. Paula, what's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite photo gig session? Mm. If you had to pick one. Oh, probably newborns. Oh, really? See, that's my least favorite. I hate yeah, mine too. That. That's why I don't do them anymore. Newborns too, because <laughs> he was like very happy for me to take over on that end of it. Yeah. Um, I found he does beautiful newborn images, mm -hmm. but I find moms want more of the Ann Gettys. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do. And um, I wanted to go that route. And so, like I said, I'm still very much learning and I've yeah. spent a lot of money in educating myself and that's still going to continue because yeah, until I get where I really want to be with it. But it is a lot of work and it the is. editing is a lot of work. Yeah. So I am I need to speed it up. I'm too slow, but yeah. I still love it. It's always going to be my favorite, the chance to snuggle with those babies and yeah. And handle them and give them something, the parents something special. I guess I wish I would have done that with my own kids, but it wasn't a thing then. No. Mm -hmm. And Getty started it all. We can thank her. Yes. <laughs> I remember. I remember when she made it big on back in the nineties. Yeah. Now everybody does it like Paula with the Photoshop on things, where she did it right there on the subjects yeah. and in the big yeah. teapots and and had like I don't know how many babies lined up ready to go. Yeah. And it's if crazy. one was crying, they just got passed off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she wasn't cheap either. I mean, you wanted to go to San no. Gettys. You had to know you're going to be spending a little money. Right. Thousands of dollars. Yeah. And cake smashes are a lot of fun too. Uh -huh. um, I really love, 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 love building a set. Okay. Um, and it's usually only an hour long and you're done. And the editing isn't as much. You know, like it's a lot easier shoot for mm -hmm. sure. You'll build a set for each one of those? Yes. They're sort of always unique then? Yes. And we have the cakes custom made. Um, I built up a wardrobe because I want to have more control over what the children are wearing mm -hmm. for their sessions. Um, I want to have control over what that cake looks like because yep. I never used to do that. I used to allow them to bring a cake, but sometimes it was just this god-awful cake with neon icing that didn't match the set at all it's a very right. important part of yeah. the cake smash so i work with a few local ladies here that do amazing work yeah. and they will um, customize it to the child too if there's any allergies um, yeah. i make sure to get that all in written yeah. form Good. that the child doesn't have allergies or if they do what they are mm -hmm. that's why i stopped bringing the cakes i made the parents bring the cake because of yeah that yeah i know it's um everybody has different opinions on that that's just and i think as a, a rule we seem to be a little bit more relaxed about that in canada i don't know mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. on different sites with a lot of different countries and they really have to watch all of that their chances of getting sued are a lot greater there than here i don't know <laughs> i've never run into nice. a problem here I, yeah so uh, let me ask you this question. What is your superpower? And um, <laughs> there was something else I had to ask you. Now I can't remember it. My Putting up with power. Warren's weights all okay. over the house. Well, yeah. What is your super, <laughs> what is Paula Moon's superpower? And what is, okay, I want to ask you about COVID. Are you guys locked down? And I want to ask you about dance schools. We're, we're, we're coming up to an hour now. So we got to <laughs> okay. be sort of conscious um, of our time here. We're so, not locked down. No, eh? We can work however we want there's no restrictions right now um it's just a lot of making sure that you follow all the restrictions there's guidelines <laughs> then right yeah the guidelines yes as far as sanitizing and, and how long have you been masks. open up now mm, i can't remember when it opened up last summer i think we were all good to go we really okay. shut down for a few months yeah we've um, been shut down didn't... We've been shut down since what, February, John? Uh, yeah, it was like uh, yeah. 
February eighth, I think, is when we shut down. We were supposed to open up four weeks later on March eighth, and then but they, they extended, extended it two weeks with yeah. these like draconian now, rules or May eighth. Sorry, these draconian rules that the cops were yeah. going to stop people, and all no, the yeah. all the cops fought back and said, "No, we're not doing that." And see, with yeah. us, it's different because right where I live, the the city beside me, where my studio is in Pembroke, there's the Quebec border there that goes into Chapeau, Quebec, and stuff, and they are in curfew up until eight o'clock. I think they changed it to nine thirty now. They were no. in curfew for the last couple months, and so you had to watch because a lot of our clients come from the Quebec side too. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we're well, we we're didn't... pretty fortunate here where we are because our premier has kind of let it open and let the small cool. businesses run. Mm -hmm. So. So are dances coming back and dance recitals? Um, we did two dance competitions just the last two weekends. Mm -hmm. um, it was really interesting because there was, there was no audience. It was just the dancer that okay. goes up and does the dance. The only one in, this, in the whole theater is the adjudicator, Warren and I, and one employee that we have processing the video. So mm -hmm. Warren would, you know, give them the, the card and then they would start processing um, the adjudications first and foremost, and then right. we do up a final video for sales. So Warren did the video, I did the stills, and it was they had to um, stop after each studio and do an hour and a half clean, <laughs> like really? everything that's cleaned. Yes, wow. and they wouldn't allow parent volunteers to do it either. You had to hire professional cleaners at, I think it was like six thousand dollars. For these wow. cleaners to come in and do it wow. but we were just so happy that we were able to yeah. have any kind of dance competition and it was great for the kids obviously not a money-making venture for the studio owners and like the mm -hmm. ones holding the competitions mm -hmm. because it was very expensive for them to do but yeah it gave something for these kids that have worked so hard yeah yeah so Coming in, look like nice. astronauts with the cleaners and stuff cleaning everything yeah, it was crazy. And they all got temperature checked as they came in. Wow. There's a lot of waiting around where yeah. usually dance competitions are very fast paced. Yeah. You know, the adjudicator rings the bell and then it's like game on. And then right when they're done, the next one's up and it's their long days, but they're it's fast. We're right now it's slow process. I bet you can't wait till uh, things come back to normal ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or it would anything. be nice. Dance is a very big part of our spring. We start mm -hmm. in February and right through the summer, we were usually busy working on dance photos, videos. And yeah. um, last year we had none of that. So that was a huge hit yeah. for us. And this year um, we did do the two competitions, but it's not. It's not, not there yet. There. Eh? No, no. But it's coming. Yes. We're hopeful for next year. That it will be back to normal. Normalish. Yeah, yes. I had three dance studios I shoot here every year, and one of them, because of COVID, she was in her seventies when we owned it. She finally just closed shop altogether, and she's not even mm -hmm. opening back up that's again. So that's one whole dance too. school that we're going to lose completely. Right? Gone. Yeah, and we weren't able to photograph any dance studios this year at all. No, nope, me neither. Not so, me. I did my. I did the one local hockey at a Walmart hockey, but three hundred kids because they can only have. 10 mm -hmm. kids on a team this year. We had to do them in the dressing room against a white background. And we're actually going to do an episode about that here where uh, we mm -hmm. actually sent them to a company's date that cut them out, put the different backgrounds for me. Mm -hmm. And then I send them to Technicare in Edmonton there to print them all for me. And I just was packing them up all last night and today. What they did here too is there's only allowed to be eight dancers on the stage at a time. And they all had to be masked. They were wearing masks. Really? Um, but for the larger groups, they would have to, we'd have to film them sometimes four times because they would bring eight kids on, you'd film it. And then the next eight kids that are normally in that group, they would do their part. So there were some numbers that it was four different filmings to get They didn't have to group. sanitize between each one of those, did they? No, no, because okay. it was the same group. They just wouldn't just allow them groups. on the stage. Yeah. They would run a whole studio um, and then do the cleaning before the next oh i see okay where normally it's you would do all ballet or all yeah. hip-hop and mm -hmm. have different studios well they weren't allowed to do that this year no, okay so. i see 
they so do what do you whole school first? Sorry, it's more, uh, Rob. You Go do a whole studio first, and then they sanitize, and then a whole another studio. Right. Type of thing. Right. Okay. So, what are you guys looking forward to for the immediate, say, four to six months? You know, we're coming into spring now, and summer's here, and fall typically busy times uh, for most studios. I know, like you said, your dance schools are gone again this year, other than the dance recitals. Mm -hmm. uh, nowhere near what you're used to from previous years, correct? No. So what are you guys looking forward to then besides all of that? Uh, seniors, um, I mean, weddings? The seniors uh, start um, next week. Well, we've already started with some of our seniors, but we're fairly booked. Okay. Um, we, we try to do them um, in the evenings. We are out at the lake, and a lot of the, the kids want their pictures with the lake in the background. Mm -hmm. We'll be busy right through the summer because a lot of the girls will wait till after their grad and right. then they want to get in the water with their dresses. Cool. <clears throat> so, really? Really? Yeah, they do. Yeah. So we do, we'll be busy with that probably nice. all summer. Family sessions and then we get into the fall and then it's lots of family sessions then too. And so then you throw guys, the babies in there. You guys are going to survive. Uh, we're hoping. So far, <laughs> sounds that way to me. Still so, so you're yeah. you're working part time at your old job in the pharmacy industry, correct? Right. And that's just temporary. Um. Well, I was always full time, and then when things got busy with the studio, probably about seven years ago, I went part time. Oh, okay. Um, so you've you've always maintained some presence yeah, in that. Yeah, kind of kept my foot in the door there. I like to have my spending money that I <laughs> have and that I don't have to answer for. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I am busy with that, probably too busy. I need to get them to stop booking me so much because right now I'm also spending three days a week grandparenting. Um, mm -hmm. Two of my daughters returned to school and they're, of course, the colleges are shut down. So they're homeschooling. Mm -hmm. So the classes are right during the time when all the grandkids need to be dropped off and picked up from school. So I drive two hours away to do all of that three days. Wow. A week. Wow. So You're on the road. Yes. So it's, it's exhausting. Cause right now mm -hmm. there's, I don't think I've had a day off in over three months, but yeah, we'll get through it. <laughs> yeah. Who needs <laughs> a day off? Parents do. <laughs> yeah. We sound very busy. I mean, with everything going on. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I think we should wind her down. It's a little over an hour now, and uh, I got to get ready for a shoot soon. I'm doing a commercial shoot for a magazine. Uh, we got, uh, what, two and a half, three more weeks before we're allowed to open up again, right, John? Something like that? Something like that. The 20th, I think, is when we're allowed. I get so many people calling me for passport photos right now, and I can't do it. You would think that was yeah. essential, but nobody could travel now anyways. But mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually had a girl come in yesterday. I was in my studio. It says closed, but she came in anyways. The door was open. And she's like, I need a passport. I'm like, I can't do it right now. And she's like, oh, I just want to get out of here. I just want to go to Florida. I'm like, well, you can't go anyways. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not Don't even taking bookings anymore either. Because what's the use of taking a booking? Because last time I took a booking because we were supposed to be done at May 8th. So I was taking bookings for after the 8th. And then all of a sudden he extended it two weeks. Now I got to call all those people and Great. change their booking. So I said, you know what? Until we open, I'm not taking any bookings right now. Yeah, you guys have it. had a rougher go than us, for sure. Yeah. Well, we're patiently waiting, so yeah, hope to get through yeah. it all. And we don't have a hot tub to go in there and do our show from either. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you got to do what you got to do to get through it, right? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are watching this now going, what is she talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just funny how that kind of took off, but it was fun. What's it called Warren. again? Tales, from, Tales the from the Tub? It was supposed to be Warren's gig. And yeah. then somehow yeah. I ended up in there in the background and then not the background. And Yeah, but mm -hmm. at least you get on camera with me when I was doing my butler's babble. It was just Colleen in the background. Literally, she wouldn't get on camera. People said that I made the show, just hearing her voice. I totally understand. <laughs> I'm not comfortable in front of the camera either. But we wanted to have a place where people could go where there was positivity um no politics for the most mm -hmm. part that stays <laughs> and just have a positive place to be where you could just forget about what was going on in the world yeah. you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to unify all our friends from around the world where we could all get together in one spot 
and yeah. interact with one another. So it was really, it was good for us. Yeah. Therapeutic. And you still do it every now and then. Yeah. Every now and then when we have yeah. time. I don't think I've done a babble in, I don't know how many months. It's because you're doing photo buzzes. That's exactly. right. Exactly. <laughs> different deal. <laughs> And I got to do another John and Dave TV later today for four o'clock at the RTV studio. So aren't you doing two episodes? Yeah, but the three o'clock got postponed because our internet's all out and she was calling oh. in through Zoom. Ah, the other one's a pastor who's actually coming into the studio. So <laughs> lots of fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Shall we wind her down? Yeah, or... first. I appreciate you being here, Paula. Well, thanks for having me. It's nice well, to see your beautiful face. Yeah. <laughs> and Good you... to see what makes Warren. Uh, tick i guess you can say. <laughs> yeah yeah well, I'm, I'm sure, sure she keeps them in line <laughs> <laughs> i try my best no definitely and i'll be giving you guys a call soon hopefully because i want to get the seniors going here too and i just need to find out a little bit more of the business side of it for mm -hmm. sure and then they'll send me a bill in the mail for consultations <laughs> coaching make it big <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I always said that when the lockdowns are all done, we can travel through Canada. Colleen and I are making a trip across Canada. We're coming to, and we'll do a Tales from the Tub right from with you guys. That would be great. We would love Although that. Although you won't get Colleen in there. Colleen will be behind the camera probably. <laughs> we'll get her out there. You wait. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Shall we wind her down? You yep betcha. Hers. Thanks, Paula. Right. Say hi to Warren for us. I will. Good luck. Adios. We'll talk. Adios. Bye -bye. Adios. <laughs>